Bonjour, welcome to Miss Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking. I'm your host, Miss Lucy, and today I'm at the chicken farm. We have a wonderful show for you, and actually we may even answer that question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? So you stay with the chef, we'll be right back. Oh baby, oh baby. The Louisiana Seafood Marketing Board is a proud sponsor of Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking Show. The Bayou State enjoys an outstanding culinary tradition. At the center of that tradition is seafood. And no wonder, Louisiana is one of the nation's leading seafood suppliers. And the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Whether it's crawfish processing or meatpacking, Louisiana is the business location for food processing. With infrastructure, site selection assistance, and workforce training. Louisiana, the shape of food technology. <laughs> What makes Louisiana so special? Our beautiful bayous and grand plantation homes surrounded by old oak trees. Our music and joie de vie. Our unique way of cooking the bounty we harvest from the land and the water. It's our communities, our businesses, our people. That's why I love Louisiana and why I want to share my precious Cajun heritage with you. Welcome to my kitchen, Chef. You know, I've taken a poll about which came first, the chicken or the egg. Guess what? The chicken won. Of course, my director, Donna, disapproves, so that doesn't mean anything because she's in the minority. So you have to write to me and tell me what you think. Okay, now let's get to cooking because I've got a wonderful menu today. I've chosen to do the chicken sauce pecan. This is just a fabulous meal that Mama used to cook years ago. Now, I have taken my chicken, which I have purchased at the grocery store, remember that, and I have browned it. You put a little dab of oil on the bottom of your pot, and you brown it real pretty, just like this. You see how gorgeous that is? It just makes a good crust on the bottom, which Cajuns call that the gratin but you have to brown it real good because it makes that crust, and that's what really adds to the flavor of that sauce pecan. All right, I've got them real brown here. Now, after you've done this, you need to take your pieces of chicken out. Okay, take them out here. Careful not to burn yourself. Uh, put it on the side, because you don't want to leave your chicken in there because you've got to saute your onions, your bell pepper, and your celery in there. Of course, you can, a Cajun can't cook without that, you know. We just really enjoy using that. It's like without a roux. You gotta have a roux also. Now, to this, I'm gonna add my onions, which I have chopped. And I'm gonna saute this in the gratin. And then add my bell pepper. You add a lot of this because you really, in a sauce pecan, you almost can't have too much of it because it really adds to the flavor. My celery. I don't know why we say onions, bell pepper, and celery instead of celery, bell pepper, and onions, or whatever. I guess that's just the way my mama taught me. Okay, let me use my big spoon. All right, and saute this real good. Now that gratin will really add to the flavor of everything along with the onions, bell pepper, and celery. And all that wonderful stuff brought together, ooh, and that chicken flavor, it'll really be good. Now, you see how it really, it's really gorgeous. It's, it's pretty and shiny. You cook this down just a little bit. Of course, now you know when I was growing up on the farm, Mama and Daddy always had chickens. And Mama, when she wanted to cook chicken, fried chicken, or, or sauce piquants, or gumbos, or whatever, she'd go in the backyard, and she'd feed them. Bless those little chickens that always fell for her trick. She'd throw her little grains of corn out there or something, and they'd run out there, and she'd bend over, and she'd catch one by the neck. She'd wring that neck and throw it out, and that poor chicken went ooh, all over the yard. And oh, I, I mean, I couldn't do that. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, you know, somebody had to do it, and you could have never caught them, you know, any other way. So that's how you did it. And I'm telling you, she'd pick that chicken up, take it in the house and she'd have to pluck it. That's something else. Oh my God, that was a chore. Then she'd bring it inside and she'd singe it and 
take all that the intestines and everything out and wash it. Now that's something she did very well and remember you must do that again today because you still have to wash your chicken real well before you cook it. And of course then she had to cut it up. Now that was a chore and that's another chore I hate to do. So when I buy a whole chicken at the grocery, sometimes I cheat. I just get pieces. <laughs> that's the easiest way. You know when you get old and lazy or well, slower, let's put it that way. So, of course, I invested in a good pair of poultry shears, and this is really what I need to use when I cut my chicken, because actually, this really cuts the job down, and it cuts right through those bones. You just don't have to worry about that. All right, let me see this. Ooh, this is so pretty. Now, this is what it has to look like, okay? Right, put my fire up a little bit. Let's speed this up. Now, after this, I'm going to add, well, of course, I could add a little dab of water because I see it might need it. Now, okay, just a dab because you don't want to make this too watery, okay? Now, next, I'm going to add my, uh, my stewed tomatoes, which, of course, if you have canned tomatoes or anything, you can use that too. But I just like to use the plain stewed tomatoes. Yeah, because I've got all the onions, bell pepper, and celery I need in this without having to buy that with all the other stuff in it. Yeah, all the flavory. Ooh, you see that? How that starts cooking real nice? Okay. Yeah. Now to this, of course, you want more of a tomato gravy. So a lot of people use the tomato sauce or paste, but what I like to use is tomato juice. So I'm going to add my tomato juice to this, and the reason for this is that it gives it a smoother taste. It's really not that, uh, well, I like tomato taste, but it's not so drastic. So then to this, I'm going to add roux, <laughs> some Cajun roux. This adds to the flavor, and it also helps to thicken it. So now. I'm going to mix all this very well together. And, of course, you're going to throw your chicken back in here. Hmm? Very good. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, look how gorgeous. I'm telling you, and this tastes as good as it looks, too. So you got to let this cook on a medium fire until the, kit, the chicken and the tomato sauce is completely done. Let me lower my fire a little bit, Let's bring it down, because next I'm going to teach you how I made my very special cream cheese uh, cake. Of course, it's not a, a real cream cheese cake like I, I don't really like cheesecake, but this is it's different. So it's not really one like you would buy in the grocery store or sometimes even eat in the restaurants. So first of all, I have added my eggs to this. You beat them up. Then you add your sugar and the cream cheese. Oops. Oh, well, all good cooks are messy cooks. I'm real good. Ask me, I'll tell you. Then I have my almond extract, lemon juice, and you whip this up together. So, okay, very good. Now this is the filling, okay? No problem, just add it there. Boy, if Lucy would be here, she would want to lick the, the beaters here. Now, I'm gonna make my crust, okay? Wow, sauce piquant's really cooking. Let me lower it in a little bit, a little bit too high. So I'm gonna mix my eggs up, beat them up with my little old mini thing here. Add my sugar, mix that up. And I've got some 
margarine. Put that in here. Okay. Beat this up. Make sure you really beat this up real good. Mm -hmm. Now to this, I'm going to add some flour. About two cups of flour with some baking soda. So this, because this is going to be your crust. This is going to be the scrumptious crust I told you about. Now, okay, that's out of the way. So now, it took me a long time to learn how to make this, but boy, once I learned how to make it, I just wanted to eat it every time I had a very special occasion. Because my sister-in-law, when she ate at my house for Christmas that year, she was so impressed with the cheesecake, she said, Lucy, you ordered this from New York? And I said, oh, no. I said, Janet, she's my sister-in-law. I said, no way. I said, this is a wonderful cheesecake that I threw together. Now, after you mix your crust, I invest it in a spring form pan. So you spray this with some nonstick coating, which I better do that today because I hate to wash dishes. Okay. Good. Let me throw this in here. Okay. Now this is going to be a very messy job. So this is what I use all on my hands. Okay. You pat that in here real good. And make sure that your sides are really, really covered up nice. Of course, this, like I said, it's a very sticky job. Like this. Mm. Oh, I hear that sauce piquant just a sizzling away. Now go to the side. Okay. You can leave it lumpy on the bottom or you can press it to the sides of the pan. It's fine. Doesn't matter. Wipe my hands here. Okay. And you throw this on top. Woo! Let me put this here in case it flops. After you put your Oh, let me fix this a little bit. It doesn't look that smooth. After you fix your crust in here, okay, you throw this on top, like this. You just incorporate it in there, and you just can smooth it out the best, you know, the best way you can. It'll all cook down, and when it gets in the, um, in the oven, it'll all smoothen out. Then you Put it all over. Now this you're going to bake in the oven at 350 for about an hour, okay? And so after it's baked, it's going to be real, it'll rise up some and it'll be, you know, it'll be pretty. But yet you need to top this. So I'm going to put this in the oven and start it baking. And this will be my, of course, my topping, which is sour cream, because this is a sour cream cheesecake, I guess you can call it lemon juice, sugar, and almond flavor. And you mix this together. And then after my cheesecake is baked, I'll put this on top of it and smooth it out. And of course, I'll bake it again for 10 minutes at 350. And that will, you know, be real brown, light brown. And then you can take it out. Wipe my hands here, get all that crust off. I'm gonna watch this here. Check this, and what we're gonna do now, and it's been real fun cooking this ch chicken sauce piquant. Now I'm gonna show you all the fun that I've had visiting the chicken farm. This is a modern day chicken farm. Not at all like it was when I was growing up and we grew our own chickens on our rice farm. Whenever we needed chickens, they were readily at hand in the backyard. This truck is delivering feed for thousands of chickens on this farm. Modern day chicken farms are big business now. A farmer will contract with a distributor and when he raises his chickens, they will be sold at the grocery where we'll purchase them ready to cook. Look at all the peeps. It was an unusual experience for me to walk among this sea of baby chicks. This house is kept very warm, just what the peeps need. I remember we had brooders back at home to hatch the eggs in, and the temperature had to be just right. The peeps need to keep warm, too, just like they would under Mama's wing. 
The farmers have automatic systems to provide continuous food and fresh water, and they carefully monitor the growth and health of their flocks. There's plenty of room for a nice game of chase, too. This is my friend Ed Putnam from the Sanderson Farms, and we're here at his wonderful chicken houses in Macomb, Mississippi. They are gorgeous, Ed. How many years have you been working with the chickens? I've been in the poultry business just about all my life, about 40 some odd years. Great. And what were the ages that we visited with this morning? We visited some birds that are less than a week old and some birds about five weeks old. You get these from the eggs? I mean, you have a hatchery we here on a, the farm? We have a hatchery that we hatch the chicks, place them on the farms a day old, and raise them up to six or seven weeks before processing. So you keep them all in one house until they are grown, right? Yes. To where the age. Day old to processing and then mm -hmm. move them out. Well, great. And how many chickens do you house per house? We have about 25,000 birds per house. And how many houses do you have? Here at this operation, we have about 685 houses. Oh, gosh, that's a lot of chickens, right? How many a lot do of you? Right, a lot of drumsticks, right? Which is not bad. About a week, how many do you process out? We process approximately 1.7 million birds a week. Wonderful. Now you also have a chicken house in Hammond, Louisiana, right? Yes, ma'am. Where they process in... those Cajun chickens. That's, there. that's correct. Good, good. That's great. So, but these chickens are just so beautiful and so healthy looking. You know, it's it's wonderful. They're well taken care of. And We're I proud appreciate of our producers. That. I think so. You've got some wonderful people working with you. Thanks, Ed, for having us over here today. It's been a wonderful time, and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I've enjoyed having you here. <laughs> Thank you. And you know what? I'll be cooking some special recipes for you on my show. Look forward to it. Thank you. Isn't this little one precious? I think I'm going to bring him home to my granddaughter, Lucy, and keep him as a pet. Well, you got to see the new addition to the family. And by the way, Lucy named it Dixie. Because after all, it is a Dixie chick. <laughs> now, let's get back to the stove. All right, I've got my stew, my, uh, my sauce piquant cooking, and it's just boiling real pretty. So we got this going. You see how it's thickened? That's what you need, because chicken sauce piquant is supposed to be thick. And that's what that roux did for it. All right, so next I'm going to show you what I would prepare with this chicken sauce piquant as a vegetable. And of course, this would be mustard greens. My mother-in-law taught me how to cook mustard greens. Believe it or not, that's the only thing that she cannot cook me with. She's been married a long, long time and has cooked a lot of meals for her 12 children, but this was one of my favorites, and I insisted on her teaching me how to cook it. Now, of course, you need First of all, mustard greens. I have already chopped these, and this is the, I'll add them to the pot here so we can start them cooking. Hopefully, they'll be done by the time I'm through. Okay. You add just a dab of water to this because mustard greens will naturally make water, and that you want to just put that in there. And of course, make sure you buy a big bottle. Because if you buy a little teensy tiny bottle, that sucker's gonna, you're gonna see, it's gonna all fall down to the bottom of the pot and you ain't gonna have nothing left. And let me show you what a mustard green leaf looks like. Because actually, I had to teach Melissa this. We went to the store and she said, Mom, I can't find the mustard greens. Well, she said, they only have the other greens. I said, Melissa, this is a mustard green. You know, there's a difference. It's kind of like lettuce and a cabbage, you know, there is a difference. So. What you do, you want to take all these big sticks out. Let me lower this a little bit. Put it on low. Take all the sticks out. Like this. Do it by hand, it's so much quicker. I like to play it in my food anyway. So, <laughs> all right, then you fold it like this and you cut it up just in pieces like this. So, you've got this going real good. Okay? Now, Okay. okay, now to this, I'm going to add some bacon. A little chopped up bacon. Let that cook all together. And an arched potato. So, actually, you want to peel your potato. And I'll, I'll take too much of the top off, but I guess that's, that's it. Just have to do it this way. 
like this, and you dice it. You want to dice a potato, okay, like this. Dice it up, put it in your pot, along with your bacon, and you cook this real, real good. So, once I, woo, trying to get out of the pot, aren't you? <laughs> I'm gonna cover this. Yeah, all right. This will cook for, I guess, about a half hour. Then, when this is through cooking, I'm gonna have to add my other special ingredients to it. So, let me show you, however. Ooh, let me stir this, this is gorgeous. Mmm, how pretty. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. Just a minute, I'll show you. <laughs> let me lower this a little bit, okay? Now, I'm gonna fix my favorite fruit salad because I love, let me get this knife here. I love fruit salad, and of course, um, it's just, this can accommodate any meal, and you can fix it with, you know, with your meal for a dessert or a salad. I love it. It's just really, and I had to throw this together when I was young. I, you, actually, bananas will turn black if you <laughs> cut them up the day before, so just don't do that, because you'll have some black bananas in here. Or if you want to, you can add a little lemon juice to it. It'll help, but anyway, okay. I'm gonna add my bananas here, okay? Now, turn my fire on here for this, because you gotta cook your, your dressing for this one. I'm just heat this up a little bit, okay? Righty, this'll work. Now, show you what the dressing's gonna be with this. Cut an egg, open an egg. Like I said, ooh, get this out of the way here, good. I'm gonna whip that egg up real good and some sugar and some salt. Whoa, here we go. And dry mustard. <laughs> well, don't wanna come out of there. I'll use my fingers, what the heck. Whip this up real good. And you add lemon juice to it, okay? Very right, good. Now, believe it or not, you're gonna cook this in a pot, naturally. What else will I cook it in? So. Stir it up real good. It doesn't take long. When it starts to get real thick, which it won't take long, so keep stirring. It's kind of like making a roux. You don't want it to get lumpy or, or burn, so you just keep stirring until it gets sort of thick. So I'm gonna, oh, I love this kind of salad and I made it so many years ago I started making it. I don't know where I got this recipe. I think, you know, that I just made it up myself. That's what's the good thing about cooks and Cajuns. They just throw everything together and if they like it, they repeat it again. Okay. And this is getting thick. You see how it's gotten thick? So the eggs are cooked. So actually that's all you want to do is cook the eggs in there. So I'm going to cut my fire off. Okay. I'm going to add it to my All right, to my salad. Put it here. Then, let me add my marshmallows here. That's, of course, <laughs> no calories in this salad, you know. <laughs> That's why it's so good. You mix that up real good, and on top of this, you add whipping cream. Just whip it up real thick. And honey, you talk about good. So. We've got this, mix it up real good. My stew's ready. My sauce pecan is ready. Okay, this is all finished. And, okay, this is cooking. I'm gonna add my sugar to this at the end after I mash it. So then, I've got my meal all prepared. And thanks for cooking with me today. Sauce pecan, beautiful cheesecake. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy this. After a wonderful visit at the poultry farm, I have a very special email from Susie Luna from Illinois. Susie says, 
Dear Miss Lucy, I just received your cookbook the other day. I have enjoyed every page that I have read so far. I think it is great that you included stories beside the recipes. It gives each and every recipe special meaning. I truly believe that your heart and soul went into this cookbook. If I ever get to pass through Louisiana, I would make sure to stop and meet some of the Cajuns there, because you have made me see the beauty of the Cajun people. I want you to know that I collect cookbooks now, and yours will always be my most prized. Thank you again for sharing your recipes with everyone. Susie Luna. Thank you, Susie, for writing to me. I really appreciate it, as much as I appreciate all my letters from all my viewers. So you stay with me. Thank you again. Look us up on the World Wide Web at lpb.org. The Louisiana Seafood Marketing Board is a proud sponsor of Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking Show. The Bayou State enjoys an outstanding culinary tradition. At the center of that tradition is seafood. And no wonder, Louisiana is one of the nation's leading seafood suppliers. And the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. Whether it's crawfish processing or meat packing, Louisiana is the business location for food processing. With infrastructure, site selection assistance, and workforce training. Louisiana, the shape of food technology. <laughs>